Hello and welcome to a Minecraft video. I'm Skudobuyu playing vanilla Minecraft Snapshot 15 W32C of the upcoming release of 1.9 PC Edition. Uh, and in this video I'm going to be talking about some problems that I've had with the uh, typical iron golem spawning cell of an iron farm. This is the original uh, original one uh, designed by I think the uh, user is JL2579. Uh, this is um, uh, this has worked really well for a very long time, which is kind of a testament to its original design. But I have had some problems with it, um, and I'll talk about um, some things that maybe could be done uh, to uh, alleviate some of those issues. Uh, first, I'm going to talk about a couple of weaknesses, um, and neither of them really have to do with um, uh, uh, they're not really design flaws per se. Um, but they are issues with this that I've had to overcome in some way, shape, or form. Uh, uh, the first is not really uh, that big of a deal, and that's the fact that some of the uh, sp iron golem spawning area uh, it needs to be removed in order to have kind of a drop zone for the iron golems that spawn inside the cell. Uh, that that's yeah, it's kind of a harsh thing to say that's a weakness because um, the iron golem spawning area up here on this level is 16 by 16 blocks and down here as well it's 16 by 16 blocks uh, that's uh, all marked by the red sandstone there uh, which means that there's 512 blocks of uh, um, spawning area and only eight of them have been removed uh, as a drop area, so that's a loss of just one and a half percent of the spawning area. So not, not really too much of a big deal. Uh, the one that bothers me a little bit more uh, is um, uh, these corners of water here. Um, this is too high flowing water, or, or too too high water. And um, if you build one of these in between layers 46 and 62 squid can spawn in here and, and uh, filling up your your chests uh, um, that are supposed to be filling up with iron with ink sacks instead probably is not what you want there is a, however a way to uh, to eliminate that and it's um, this uh, this specific water flow is something that i've seen basically in every demonstration of how to build one of these uh, and i've really never liked it so the reason why you have to have that um, is because uh, right here, these are not water source blocks. So you've got water source blocks pretty much everywhere else except in these corners. Uh, and you can't put a water source block right here because if you put a water source block right here, uh, then this one and this one both change to water source blocks and that causes a cascade of, uh, uh, of changing flowing water to water source blocks. Uh, and not only would that create a big mess, it's really hard to clean up. So. Uh, that's that's the reason why, uh, but there's actually another way to do this. So let me grab a bucket of water here. Uh, so instead of those two, uh, or these three blocks not being water source blocks, uh, I'm going to have these two blocks not be water source blocks, and I'm going to change this one into a water source block. So now this is a water source block, this is a water source block, water source block all the way down. Uh, and uh, likewise down here, but not these two. Uh, and uh, now if I break these, uh, um, because there's a gap in between the two water source blocks over here, these are not going to be converted to water source blocks. And it creates a little bit of a strange water flow, uh, but that strange water flow still pushes everything into the center. So I can do that uh, on all of these corners here. So there, and uh, convert that one. Another water source block here. Okay, last one. There we go. Uh, and so that does create a little bit of a strange water flow in the corner, but anything that gets here, uh, anything that um, comes over there is still going to get pushed into the middle. Uh, and now I've got one high water everywhere. And I can do that on this level and the level down here. Um, so uh, that second weakness with respect to squid spawning, uh, I can make go away entirely. Uh, the first weakness really isn't a weakness, it just has to do with the farm design. You have to sacrifice 1.5% of the spawning area. Uh, not too much of a big deal. Uh, and the second weakness, like I said, you can make go away entirely. Uh, I've had four problems with this farm design, however. Uh, um, two with villagers and two with iron golems. And I should preface that by saying uh, I, I've read 
uh, people talking about this particular design and how they've used it for a very long time with no ill effects. They've never had any problems with it whatsoever. Uh, so take my analysis with a grain of salt, um, uh, but I, I wanted to mention uh, these things anyway. Uh, the first two with respect to villagers, um, the first uh, has to do with the fact that villagers are just insanely glitchy. Uh, they, they, um, uh, when the chunks are reloaded, they tend to appear inside the walls and they can either jump up and run around the top of the farm or they suffocate to death or they fall out. Uh, but they're, they're really glitchy and uh, especially when you have a lot of them in one of these little holding rooms, uh, which is why uh, the recommendation is to build kind of a larger holding room, at least four by four, and put a water source block in each corner. Uh, if you put a water source block in each corner, the water flow uh, forces all of the villagers in this little pod to uh, uh, to stay in the center, uh, where they just kind of bob around. So not only do they kind of stay off the floor, uh, they stay away from the walls, at least provided that you don't have very many in here at a time. Um, this particular spawning uh, iron golem spawning cell has 32 doors and 12 villagers and of course if you stuck all 12 villagers in here you might still see some glitching out through walls uh, but um, uh, but this particular problem uh, villager glitching can be mostly eliminated uh, by adding water to the villager holding areas so that they're uh, kind of being pushed away from the walls uh, the bigger problem with respect to villagers has to do with lightning. Uh, and that's because um, when uh, lightning strikes up here, uh, if it strikes anywhere along here, for example, uh, all of these villagers are going to take damage. They're all going to turn into witches and they will all despawn, uh, presumably because you're somewhere in loaded chunks far away or, or maybe not even loaded chunks if this is in the, sp uh, in the spawn chunks. Uh, but uh, this will effectively turn off this cell and you will no longer have iron golems uh, spawning in here if, the, uh, if this reduces the number of villagers to less than 10. Uh, now that is uh, a bit of a design weakness, uh, although to be fair, uh, villagers did not turn into witches when this particular spawning cell was designed uh, a long time ago. Um, uh, but they could still take damage and and uh, and and be killed anyway. But um, uh, so the way in which to fix that is then to put some kind of lightning shield over the villagers. Um, now building it, uh, building a shield up uh, this high would be sufficient, uh, except that you also have to build it a little ways over the iron golem spawning area. And um, iron golems need four spaces high to spawn. This is only three spaces high, so you'd have to build this up uh, even one block higher. Uh, so that's uh, even uh, even above what would be required to be safe uh, with respect to lightning mechanics. Uh, so you might have to build a considerable platform up here in order to uh, in order to make the villagers safe. Uh, and you'd have to extend this all the way out here and then fill this in and once this is filled in then the villagers down in that little uh, holding area would be safe from lightning. I'm pretty sure that would be okay. Um, and you'd have to build one of these over every single area where you have villagers. It's doable, uh, but if you've built one of these spawning cells really close to the build limit, you know, this is layer 254, 255, uh, you don't have enough space to build this, uh, which means that you're going to have to do something else with the villagers in order to protect them from lightning. Uh, you can lower this uh, this holding area a little bit, um, uh, but uh, there are a couple of things that you can do, but uh, uh, generally speaking, um, protecting from lightning is going to require some extra infrastructure that you may not have space for, and uh, don't need to clean all that up. Uh, okay, so uh, that's the... Uh, two problems uh, with villagers that I wanted to mention. Uh, the two problems with iron golems uh, has to do, um, well one of them has to do with basically just the the size of iron golems. Iron golems are 1.4 blocks wide, uh, which means that if you have a huge number of doors on the cell and a huge number of villagers, you can have more than one iron golem spawning in here at a time. 
Uh, or if you have another one of these cells high in the sky and you're dropping iron golems down into here, there can still be more than one iron golem in here at a time. And if two iron golems come to the hole here and they kind of meet each other in opposite directions, they can just kind of push against each other forever and ever and not drop through the hole. Uh, which will shut off this farm, uh, or this, uh, this spawning cell. Uh, iron golems will no longer be able to spawn here, and the iron golem that's here uh, won't be pushed out. Uh, the, uh, and uh, it can be that eventually they jostle each other enough to fall into the hole, or maybe another iron golem falls from on high and kind of knocks one of them aside. Uh, but I have seen iron golems get stuck for relatively long periods of time, uh, which uh, even if it doesn't completely shut off the spawning cell, it will reduce the output, and it can reduce the output uh, pretty significantly. So uh, that is one problem with respect to iron golems. That, that I would say, is, is kind of a design flaw. Um, it's not really a design flaw if you're talking about this, uh, this whole thing being a, uh, an entire farm, because you'll only ever have one golem spawning in here at a time. Uh, but it, it can be problematic if, you, uh, if you're upscaling this a bit. Uh, the other problem with iron golems uh, has to do with the fact that uh, the spawning area here is supposed to be 16 by 16. Uh, I've marked, the, like I said, I marked that out with the red sandstone here uh, all the way around. This is a 16 by 16 area, and I've got one block of buffer between the supposed spawning area and the wall. Uh, now the problem is that I have sometimes seen iron golems spawning further away then 16 blocks from the supposed center of the village. And, and the um, uh, X and Z coordinate center of the village uh, should be the middle of these uh, quartz blocks here, right at the corner, uh, which means basically the uh, here I'm facing north. So the northwest corner of this block here, which is right there. Uh, so that one's marking the middle. Um, and sometimes they appear further away than 16 blocks uh, from that corner. Uh, and I think that has to do uh, with a rounding error when computing the center of the village. That's my suspicion. I don't know that for sure, um, but that would be my suspicion, uh, which, uh, which means that um, if there's a rounding error and the center of the village is computed as just on the other side of this block over here, that gets rounded down to this corner over here, uh, which means that now iron golems can spawn in these block on top of these quartz blocks here on the other side of the uh, red sandstone which means they get clipped into the walls uh, and once they're clipped into these solid blocks they can actually uh, walk up on top of here uh, and I've seen them walking on the tops of the farms or falling into the village uh, holding area uh, villager holding areas um, but uh, whatever it is that they decide to do even if they just stay clipped into the wall here and don't move uh, that will, of course, shut off the production of this spawning cell. So um, that uh, that's not really a, a design flaw. I think that's more of a, a, a computational rounding error, uh, an issue within the game. Uh, that's my suspicion. I don't know that for sure. But um, regardless of how it happens, it actually does happen. Uh, and as a consequence, uh, I would prefer to see something that is actually a little bit wider. Uh, so I, I've gone ahead and uh, been playing around with some ideas on how I might alleviate all of those different issues. Uh, and believe it or not, this is actually an iron golem spawning cell. Um, I, this also has 32 doors and 12 villagers, although my 12 villagers are... Um, yeah, well, I'm not very nice to villagers. Uh, but um, I've got 12 villagers in here, and I've taken care of the villager glitchiness by trapping them all in minecarts. I've never, ever actually seen a mob be able to escape from minecarts or glitch out of a minecart, except witches. I don't know why every once in a while a witch will escape from a minecart. Uh, but I've never seen a villager do it, and so uh, I, it doesn't matter how far away I go with respect to rendering or reloading. Uh, all of these villagers are, are always here. I've never had a problem with them glitching out. So uh, taking care of the glitching problem, um, the, uh, uh, with respect to lightning, um, these villagers are deep enough under the top surface of this 
that no matter where lightning strikes up here, if it does strike up here, uh, none of them will take damage. Uh, and uh, even though they're down a bit farther than they are with the classic design over there, uh, they still recognize, recognize all of these doors as, uh, as part of the village, so the go golems will still spawn. Uh, as for the problems with the golems, um, I've uh, increased the buffer area around here to two blocks uh, all the way around. So there's still a 16 by 16 block area marked out with red sandstone uh, that ends right here with this, uh, with this edge. Uh, but I've got two blocks of buffer all the way around just in case I encounter that uh, suspected rounding error and uh, an iron golem spawns, you know, like right here, for example, it's still going to get pushed out of the cell. Uh, and um, I have also taken pains to ensure that there is nowhere where two golems pushing against each other uh, could uh, could block each other. So down here, uh, there's uh, another water stream that's pushing the iron golems into a central water stream. This comes from both directions, but it, there's uh, four uh, uh, four water blocks wide here. So um, iron golems will uh, more than one iron golem will never get stuck. Uh, I've also uh, eliminated <laughs> the, uh, the first um, uh, embarrassed to say weakness um, uh, of reducing the spawning area by 1.5% um, by uh, having the iron golems pushed out to the edge here. Um, that may or may not be a savings because um, the amount of spawning area that's reduced over there is so small. Uh, and here, uh, it's going to take, on average, a larger amount of time to push a golem out of the cell. Uh, so th there's probably about an even trade-off there, uh, but, um, uh, but I do have all of the available spawning area, potentially spawning iron golems here. Uh, I've also taken uh, made use of the new 1.9 block mechanics of trap doors. Uh, to ensure that I never have to have uh, uh, great, uh, higher than uh, one high water anywhere um, by using trap doors to push, uh, to push iron golems. Now, uh, for a player, uh, I'm just going to get pushed over here on top of the trap doors and I'm going to stop. But iron golems, since they're 1.4 blocks wide, um, as soon as they land on top of these trap doors, they're getting pushed by this water over here, they're going to get picked up by this water over here, and so they will keep going. So, uh, so uh, even though there's not a drop in the, the water altitude, um, even though there's not too high water anywhere, uh, iron golems will continue to get pushed all the way, all, all the way over to the edge. Uh, now, I should mention that this used to be possible even prior to uh, the 1.9 uh, mechanics, uh, and that's because you could use something like a pressure plate in place of a trap door, uh, right? You could have pressure plates, and that would have the same effect. Uh, the difference between using pressure plates and using trap doors for this, however, is that pressure plates do not prevent mob spawning. Uh, so if you used pressure plates to do this um, all the way across, uh, you would need to light the pressure plates, uh, light the block above the, uh, light the block in which the pressure plates are, uh, to eight or above, and that is hard to do when you have something that's this wide. Uh, you could put a torch over here or glowstone or something, uh, and that would uh, get a few blocks in. Uh, likewise, on the other side, but the ones in the middle were just generally hard to light correctly, uh, and uh, that's where a trap trap doors really come in handy because um, I don't actually have to worry about lighting this area. Uh, the trap doors are going to prevent mob spawning. So uh, that is um, uh, sort of a, a redesign of the uh, classic mob spawning cell, uh, or the, sorry, the classic iron golem spawning cell. I, I might actually use this um, in uh, in uh, my latest, uh, my latest uh, survival world, my 1.9 survival world, um, I'm probably going to tweak with it a little bit more first before I decide to go ahead and build it. Uh, but I did want to show another another design here. Uh, I'll go back to the trap doors for a moment. Um, the trap doors prevent hostile mob spawning, but they do not prevent iron golem spawning. Uh, and that is because the conditions for spawning an iron golem just have to be a flat top surface, and then anything in between has to be a, um, a basically a transparent block. Uh, trap doors are a transparent block, uh, and as a consequence, uh, the iron golem will spawn 
uh, on top of the uh, on top of the uh, uh, the red sandstone there, and it will spawn inside the trap door. Uh, and that's going to be true of any transparent block that you place above here. The the iron golem will spawn inside it. And that is the basis of this uh, farm over here, or the spawning cell over here. Um, this one here utilizes that mechanic. Uh, I, I still have water flowing uh, on the, the levels, but the water is actually pushing out the, um, the iron golem drops, not the iron golems themselves. Um, yeah, so uh, this one is maybe a little bit cruel, but uh, <laughs> I've got, I've got uh, 32, uh, 32 doors and 12 villagers again. Um, here, however, the mechanics are, are a little bit different. Uh, so I've got uh, a spawning area for iron, uh, for iron golems. Uh, that's all this red sandstone down here. This water, again, is not going to be pushing the iron golems out. It's going to be pushing their drops out. Instead, the iron golems are going to spawn on top of the red sandstone. And I've got slabs up here, lava. They're going to be spawning inside the slabs and inside the lava. And they're going to get stuck because the slabs, uh, the slabs block movement, so they will be stuck, and the lava will kill them. And their drops fall down below in the water and get washed into these uh, into these hoppers here. So I've got two layers of that. Um, uh, you have to be a little if you're going to be stacking cells of this kind. You have to be a little bit more careful if uh, iron uh, iron ingots are falling from a, a higher up cell into here. Uh, so that's why I've got this extra platform of water to push iron ingots in, so they don't get consumed by the lava down here. Uh, but uh, but yeah, this <laughs> this actually it really does work. Um, I cleared out the uh, I cleared out the chest here right before I started this uh, started this video, and you can see it's already killed a couple of iron golems. I don't know how much of the iron is lost to lava. Um, I haven't done that kind of a comparison test with uh, something something like that over there. Uh, so this may not be very practical, uh, but it is fun. Uh, it does illustrate some interesting mechanics about uh, the way in which iron golems, uh, or at least uh, villager golems, spawn. Um, so this could be safe. If you had 24 extra blocks, uh, extra source blocks of lava laying around, you might want to try something like this. Um, but yeah, so uh, uh, lots of different ways to construct these kind of cells. Um, uh, this one also takes care of a lot of the problems of the other cell. Uh, villagers aren't going to be struck by lightning. They're inside minecarts, so there's no glitching. Uh, there's only one high water in here, so there's no squid, uh, no squid spawning. Um, and uh, iron golems, even if they do generate um, so that they are more than 16 blocks away, um, they're going to be blocked in by solid blocks and uh, the lava is going to be touching them and killing them there anyway. So it doesn't matter if they spawn a little bit further away. Uh, and uh, because iron golems aren't being pushed by the water, uh, just their drops are, uh, they're never going to get stuck despite the fact this is only two blocks wide. So uh, this, uh, this uh, cell design also takes care of a lot of the issues that I've had with the classic cell design. So a lot of different ways to do this. Um, I've illustrated a couple of interesting ones. Uh, but I still think I'm going to play around with this a little bit more before I uh, before I decide on on uh, how exactly I want to do that. I'm kind of leaning towards this just because I think it looks interesting. Uh, anyway, that is it then for this video. Uh, thanks very much for watching, and if you have any questions or suggestions, please leave a note in the comments.